So can you explain what the legal fiction is? I can try. The legal fiction is an abstract Sorry. term. Okay? Yeah. The legal, I can try. The legal fiction is an abstract term to explain a concept. And so is the term straw man. These are actually not legal terms as it were. Uh, these are terms that have been invented by people trying to explore the difference between them as an individual and the uh, entity that the government thinks they are, which is two separate things. And it's a very, it's a, it's a great minefield of confusion for many people. For me, the simplest thing to understand, the easiest way to understand it is that you are divine. And if you say something that touched you caused a billion pounds worth of damage, nobody can say you're wrong. And if you decide that what somebody has said has caused you the greatest upset and you want something to happen to them, nobody can say you're wrong. And I think the law recognises that. And the creation of the legal arena is all about limiting liability. So the whole thing is about limiting liability to protect people from the fact that we are all unquantifiably valuable. And uh, also, nobody can pull us up for our own assessment of things. So the creation of the legal arena is, for me, how the peace of the camp is maintained, as it were, or is supposed to be, or its roots are in how the peace of the camp used to be maintained, when people of many different beliefs and ideas and value systems would come together um, and greatly disagree with each other. So law and legality arose to maintain that peace while interactions were happening. How, does the, how can a legal system then attach laws to something that's divine? Well, that's why they can't. This is the whole point of the trick. The confusion is what they call, it's to create something called joinder, which is when you accept or identify with that legal entity. And in this country, which is the roots of it, it's all about title. And this is a simplification for you. One of the big problems for people is that when they've been looking at the straw man or the legal fiction is that they've been getting into these complex legal philosophies or these using legal situations to try to highlight something that's quite abstract. To me, it's really simple. And it's all about, nobody has to learn anything complicated. Here we are uh, in this country, the home of most Western law, really, um, in terms of what's executed in America and things like that. Its roots are in British law. And uh, over here, it's all about title, you know, because uh, that's why we have dukes and duchesses and lords and ladies and all the rest of it. And this is why when you talk about benefits, you talk about your entitlement. So in this country, it's all about your title. Now, what happened in this country is the legal fiction uh, came about with the transference of title. So your entitlement was changed with your title. So in this country, that title is the mister. So as soon as you identify with your mister, you're identifying with the legal fiction. I'll clarify that if you want me to. So, mister, if you look up the word mister in any legal dictionary, it's not there, okay? Because it's not the actual word it comes from. The word you will find is mystery. That's the word mister with a Y at the end. Mystery is a legal term which uh, in Black's dictionary, which I'm using because it's got the shortest meaning, not because it's the only one that mentions it. So Black's eighth edition has a nice short, succinct meaning for mystery, which was, I, sh I, I would like to add, archaically spelled mystery as in M-Y-S-T-E-R-Y. So archaically it was, it's a mystery. So that gave rise to the modern mystery, which is M-I-S-T-E-R-Y. And the four words in Black's eighth are a business, comma, a trade. Okay, a business, comma, a trade. A mister is that which is engaged in mystery, which is a business. So this is the legal entity, the legal person. What's happened in this country is you've had your real title taken off you. Now, what's really funny is your mister has corporate obligations to report its income, fulfill tax obligations, statutory obligations, which are to protect the people. But while you're operating as a mister, you're not a people, you're a business. So you have another title though, and it was a title you had that you were told was about being a child, but it's actually not. And the title I'm referring to is obviously the title master. And in this country, the true title for the people is the title master in relation to our servants. Now, 
the great hoodwink that happened in this country, the bait and switch. Can you just back up, just yeah. and start that sentence where you were before? Which one? Um, like <clears throat> master. Yeah. yeah. So, but what, in this country, the, 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 yeah, the real original title, or the constitutional title, is the title master. And the old bait and switch that happened was to make people think that Mr. and Master were simply evolutions of each other when they're not. Now, that, um, the, the work that I've been doing the last few years is about reclaiming and reusing the power of the master title in relation to all servants and then seeking to extend that in relation to corporate entities as well. That's the tricky part. But I want you to look, uh, uh, first of all, I want to mention that if you look up master in any legal diction in the world, it does not mention being under 16, under 7, anything like that. I'll give you a list of definitions you will find in legal definitions of master. The master is always the creditor or the principal, but a principal is not necessarily a master. That's literally one of the definitions from Blacks. Now, what that means is we are the lender, we are the creditor, whereas what the system would make you believe is that you're the debtor because the mister is, you see? I'm complicating it there. It doesn't need to be that complicated, sorry. The simplification is, it's all about the mister and the master in this country. So when you were a master, you had no statutory obligations whatsoever. You were told it was because you were under 16. It's not, it's because you weren't operating as a business. So when you become a mister? When you become a 16, mister, you start operating well, no, they start sending you stuff in mister at about 12, I think, or something like that. Really, they stopped formally calling you master at the age of seven which is quite interesting because those of you that have looked at the whole Sesta KV thing is, there can be a real, I mean, I'm not sure though because that's getting into some of the legal abstractions. Yeah. I want to keep it in the simple arena here because nobody needs to get into this complex legal stuff. I really want to, that's the point of what I want to bring to people is, this is simple language in this country because it's the, where it all started. You fall so, afoul of the trap when you go into the complex legal system. Yeah, exactly, you exactly. You fall afoul of it and because it was an ignorance. The other definitions of master, a master is captain of his vessel. Okay, it comes from the, of the mast, a master. A master is the employee, sorry, the employer of another for the conduct of services and the one who has control over that other's conduct. What we have lost as the people of this country is control over the conduct of our servants. And that's what I'm trying to do with the People's Public Trust is reassert control of the people over their wayward and disturbed servants, basically. But um, yeah, so master is the correct title for men in this country. I just want to address the other legal fiction titles so that the women understand where they stand. So Mr. we see as MR. Then we get Mrs. Okay, so as a spell, as a word, you know, Mrs. It's not even a word. You look at it as like, well, MERS. What's MERS? Actually, it's, and, and loads of people will come up with different meanings of what that is. It's mistress or whatever. It's not. It comes from, this is my, my belief anyway, and my experience is that it comes from misters, and it's missing an apostrophe. So what actually happens is the miss, which we'll come to in a moment, becomes misters upon marriage because she becomes the property of the business. So it's mister and come misters on. of the business. Yeah, belongs to the business. Now, if you look at miss, which is obviously what women wear beforehand, uh, to understand miss, you need to look at a form. So picture a form. Title, forename, surname. Under title, if you put miss, that means miss this. Skip this. Title, miss. No title. So when women fought for equal rights, the thing that didn't catch up was title. But it didn't need to because statutory implementation had already taken place by then, really. So it didn't really need to be worried about too much. But somebody's measuring it because those titles are there. So basically, the women have no real status per se in the corporate world until they're married, which is obviously when they become of the business. So those are the three legal titles, primary legal titles in this country that apply to everybody, which are their legal fiction. So whenever you use Mr, Mrs or Miss, you're using your legal fiction. That's the simplest way to understand it. Whenever you, ch you change your title or you seek to use a private title like master or mistress or something like that, I would recommend master because it is actually asexual, legally speaking. So I'd actually recommend everybody use the title master in relation to their public servants. But um, that to me is when you know, or when I operate as my human entity. Can we pause for a second? Yeah. Just get a cup. Well, hands up, the microphone rubs. Yeah, because I move, move well, a little bit. I don't want yeah. you to restrict your movement. You can put your head up.